Alright, it's 13 F day. Let's have a look. Pabrythons. Oh. Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So uh, today we're going to break the video into two parts. Basically, as you can see from the title, uh, in the latest round of 13F filings, we saw that Monas Pabri sold down uh, just under about 20% of his Graftech investment. Uh, it's been about 90 days uh, since they've had to file those reports, so uh, more could have changed since that time. We won't know that until the next quarter of 13F reports come out. Um, but basically, uh, a lot of you have been messaging me and I've had a few comments across several videos on YouTube um, asking me for my thoughts on what's going on with Graftech with um, Pabri selling um, and some of the various things going on with the business itself. So I want to break this video down into two parts. What's happening with Graftech itself? Why I think Monas Pabri may have sold? Um, please don't take any of this as financial advice, especially when we're talking about individual companies here. Do your own research, make your own decisions, all that sort of stuff. But um, I want to dive into this because several of you have been asking for my thoughts on it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video, but for now, let's get into it. And just before we do start, I'm not going to talk too deeply about the actual investment case for Graftech. Um, I've made another separate video on that, so I'll link that somewhere on the screen here if um, you've never even heard of Graftech or anything like that. Um, I just want to jump kind of straight into what's happening with the business. So the main thing that's really attracted a lot of investors to Graftech has been these take or pay contracts. So uh, the take or pay contracts basically have locked in revenues and free cash flows for quite a high percentage of Graftech's volume of the graphite electrodes that they sell. So uh, off the top of my head, I think that's around 70% of their volume is um, already contracted, basically already sold for the next uh, few years. Uh, to some of the customers that are in the electric arc furnace uh, sort of steel production industry. So um, that's one of the real pros of Graftech. They have that guaranteed revenue and they actually have guaranteed cash flows as well because the 70% of graphite electrodes being sold uh, under contract has actually also been sourced, uh, the sort of raw materials to produce those electrodes are also being sourced in-house. So they come from a Graftech subsidiary called Seadrift. They produce something called petroleum needle coke, uh, which allows Graftech to produce these electrodes. And it means that Graftech are not exposed to various changes in commodity prices with petroleum needle coke, um, and they're not exposed to commodity price changes uh, to as big an extent as they could be uh, with actual electrode price changes. So that's one of the main uh, really big pros of um, being invested with the company Graftech at the moment, and it's one of the things that really attracted Monas Pabri to the investment. Um, and by and large, those have been working out basically as planned the last couple of quarters. So I have been following the company very closely because I am a shareholder. Um, so I've been keeping up to date with, with what's been going on, as you can probably understand. So um, largely things have been um, going to plan. The, the revenue and free cash flow numbers and so on are largely what we expected. Um, the only caveat to that is there have been a couple of bankruptcies. So the basically the only way that customers can get out of paying these take or pay contracts is if the customer goes bankrupt for whatever reason. And I just want to clear a couple of things up on that. So I've heard the argument from some um, investing sites and some write-ups and that sort of thing that um, Graftech are sort of taking advantage of their customers and Graftech are forcing their customers into bankruptcy with, with taking out these take or pay contracts. Um, and my response to that is twofold. So firstly, um, in the last conference call, it was mentioned that um, these take or pay contracts were locked in when commodity prices were extremely high. So they are above the long-term average price for graphite electrodes that Graftech are able to sell these things at. Um, in saying that, over the period of time that the contracts have been running for so far, um, basically all of their customers uh, have paid on average a lower price than they would have if they'd bought those electrodes on the spot market because pricing was so extreme at the peak. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that 
graphite electrodes themselves typically only represent somewhere between about one and five percent of the total cost uh, to produce steel in an, in an electric arc furnace um, so it's relatively minor in the grand scheme and I don't think you can really blame you know a one to five percent expense being you know locked in um, for forcing sort of steel companies into bankruptcy so so far that that is something that's happened but it has been relatively minor um, there are a few companies where the take or pay contracts have been sort of renegotiated and that doesn't necessarily mean that the cash won't be turning up um, for Graftec. It sort of means that uh, the volumes of, of those contracted sales are sort of being moved around a little bit. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on what's happening there. Um, there have been a few bankruptcies. Uh, with some of their customers, but by and large, cash flows and, and profitability has been uh, basically what we'd expected so far. So there's two other major developments that have happened in the last couple of quarters with Graftec. Uh, the first thing is that there was a secondary block trade that happened uh, towards the back end of 2019. And basically what that is, is essentially the company Graftec is buying back stock from an existing shareholder. In this case, it was Brookfield Asset Management, who happens to own about 80% of the outstanding shares. Um, and again, there was some con kind of some confusion around this. I was even listening to a podcast where um, Graftec happened to come up, and the people on that podcast were under the impression that uh, Graftec had bought back shares at north of $20 a share when they were trading at 12 or 13 in the open market at that time, which obviously is not a good thing for our remaining shareholders. So um, that was basically cleared up in the most recent quarterly report. I'll put up a screenshot here um, and you'll see that they paid, um, I'll have to do the exact maths and I'll probably put that on the screen as well, but somewhere in the 12 or $13 range. So basically market price for that uh, share buyback and that aligns pretty well with what Graftec again said they were going to do so they have the goal of returning 50% of their free cash flow to shareholders um, and that's the the sources for that are going to be twofold so it's going to be through share buybacks and it's going to be through dividends uh, we have seen a dividend increase over the last um, few quarters again but uh, by and large, it looks like a high percentage of this is going to be done through share buybacks. And the third and final thing that's really been a major development with the business is that the 30% of graphite electrode volume that has still been sold on the spot market has come down in price. So uh, the spot market has sort of started to trend back towards what would be a, a typical kind of long-term average. Um, and again, Although this isn't, you know, the best thing in the world when you're trying to sell a product and the price you get paid for that product goes down, um, it again is kind of expected. We we had these take or pay contracts locked in when prices were through the absolute roof. Uh, we know that over time a commodity is not going to stay at a price that's through the roof. It's going to come down over time. Um, but the good news is the price uh, is still well above the long-term average and it's still very, very profitable. And the main driver for that is really um, actually electric vehicles, um, which sounds a little bit strange when you're talking about uh, steel production and all these different things. Um, but basically, Graftec needs something called petroleum needle coke, like I said earlier on, to produce the graphite electrodes and petroleum needle coke is also um, an ingredient used in making electric car batteries so there's been a big spike in demand for pet coke uh, it's driven up the price it's driven up the cost to produce graphite electrodes for um, all the people that don't have um, a subsidiary like sea drift and even for graphtech because they are sort of purchasing in um, some pet coke to do their production but by and large it's driven up the raw material cost which has driven up the graphite electrode costs um, and Graftec has um, benefited actually from that massively because they have known costs for pet coke for a large percentage of it and they can sell their graphite electrodes for way more whereas their competitors can also sell their electrodes for way more but they also have to pay more for the raw material costs so um, that's something that's happening um, like I say, things are normalizing a little bit, so uh, the graphite uh, electrode spot market price has been trending down a little bit. But overall, in terms of what's happening with the business, it's it's largely as expected. They are, um, you know, they're printing money from these take or pay contracts. They are they are paying a bound down a little bit of debt, but largely they're focusing on returning cash to shareholders through buybacks and through dividends 
they're trading at like a PE of three. Um, I still really, really like the, the GraphTech investment. So that's what's happening with the company. Let's talk about Monish Pabrai and some potential reasons why he may have been selling down this position. So the first thing I will say about this sale from Monish Pabrai is to me, it seems very out of character. Um, and the reason for that is sort of twofold as well. So firstly, Pabrai doesn't typically sell an investment uh, any sooner than probably two to three years unless there are just ridiculous increases in price uh, and he thinks those shares have reached intrinsic value and can kind of sell out. So it does seem a little bit out of character uh, and the second reason for that is because he actually gave quite a detailed presentation to some MBA students at Boston College and I'll put up a screenshot of the video title here so you can look that up on YouTube uh, at some stage if you'd if you'd like to watch that. Uh, but basically in that video he went through the investment case in a lot of detail um, and went into several of the reasons why he owns GraphTech and why he really likes it as an investment. And fundamentally, none of the things that he mentioned in that video, as far as I can tell at least, have really changed with the company. So um, it seems strange that he is selling out. Um, possibly there's, there's something he's seen that um, has gone over my head and all those sorts of things. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens and maybe he will talk about it at some stage. But um, there are always several reasons why an investor, particularly a professional investor, may sell shares that have nothing to do with the actual underlying business. So I want to get into some potential reasons there. Unfortunately, I don't have a direct phone line to Monash, so I can't just call and ask him what's happening. Uh, but I want to speculate a little bit on some things that potentially could be going on. So the first thing that comes to mind is Monish Pabrai may have found a new investment opportunity elsewhere. So we saw that um, his Fiat Chrysler and Micron technology stakes were relatively unchanged. And those are the only other two stocks that we can see in his 13F. We know that Pabrai has several investments um, outside of the states and that makes up quite a significant percentage of his portfolio. Um, so the first kind of obvious thing that comes to mind is maybe he's found something a whole bunch more attractive in another country uh, and he simply needed cash. Um, as far as reasons why he wouldn't sell Fiat Chrysler or Micron and he chose to sell Graftec instead, my guess would be um, if I am right and he is going to look for, or he did need cash for another investment, my guess would be that it is a basically for tax reasons. So with Fiat Chrysler, he has um, very large gains over a long period of time, uh, long enough for it to fall into a uh, long-term gains kind of capital tax, uh, long-term gains tax rate. So he's held it for far longer than a year, which is the requirement for that in the US. Um, but nonetheless, he does have a lot of gains and he would be paying tax on that. Um, same sort of thing with Micron, he'd be paying tax on that. I think he's up probably about 60, 70, 80% somewhere in that uh, ballpark on Micron at the moment. And that one he had, at the time of this 13F come out, he had held for basically exactly a year. So he'd be um, exposed to much higher tax rates if he was to sell that one. So I'm guessing since he was still relatively kind of even on the uh, graphic investment and the tax implications wouldn't have been as large, that probably would have been his pick should he really need cash quite quickly um, and not want a large tax burden. So that's the thing that uh, I'm guessing uh, is the reason why he might have picked GraphTech, assuming that I'm right on the business and, and nothing else has changed. The second thing that may have caused him to sell is basically once a year, uh, Motors Pabrai has annual redemptions from his investors. So He's basically cloned the old uh, Buffett partnership model of the 1950s and 60s where he has annual redemptions and investors have to give him some sort of notice towards the end of each calendar year whether they are looking to redeem uh, some of the money that they have in the investment fund. So um, if there were annual redemptions, again for similar kind of tax reasons, that could have been a reason that Monish Pabrai sold down some of the GraphTech stake. Um, but again, that speculation, we don't we don't kind of know for sure. And unfortunately, that's kind of all the special insights that I have for you. Um, it's really, really hard to tell why people sell investments sometimes. Uh, we're basically just going to have to wait for the next 13F or wait for Monish to come out and sort of publicly talk about it at some point to see what's really going on. Um, I hope that he continues to hold that uh, 
the 80% of the shares he does have um, because I'm personally a shareholder in Graftech as well and I'd like to see that uh, we're still kind of aligned on that one. Um, but you never know, there could be something going on with the business I'm missing. Um, he could have found some amazing opportunity. He could still love the, the Graftech investment. There's a whole range of possibilities. Um, but those, those 13 Fs are at a 90 day delay. So, um, again, something may have changed even since these filings. So we're just going to have to wait and see the pro for remaining Graftech shareholders in the meantime is that Graftech are continuing to execute on the sort of take or pay contracts and they are continuing to buy back a lot of shares. Uh, and as a result, with the share price uh, down a little bit since some of this news is coming out, uh, as of this morning, it's trading in sort of the mid to high $9 range, something like that. Um, Graftech get to buy back shares uh, cheaper than they have been able to over the past few months. So assuming that everything continues to work out really well for the business, uh, that can't help but be good news for remaining shareholders. So that's my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, I hope that answered some questions. There's definitely some that uh, I've still got and bunch of stuff going on but i hope you enjoyed the video uh if you did hit like hit subscribe you can watch some old videos over there hit subscribe over there uh drop your comments on what you think might be going on down below i would love to hear from you uh, otherwise i will see you in the next one cheers